Buenos días. ¿Cómo está usted? We are Tuesday now, May the 11th. And we are reading in Romans. We're getting near the end of chapter 2. Let's read because we got a lot to cover today. No, no fooling around. No diversions. Now, Paul has just said to the Jew who prided himself that he had the law, he went to the temple and all that, he said, but do you obey all the law? Oh, you didn't know that 90% obedience doesn't cut it with God? Oh, no, we're going to learn. The law will only justify you if you're perfect. 100%, 24-7, 365, your entire life. That's what the law demands. It's like you can't kill anybody or you're going to go before the judge and get thrown away. No, but I don't, I, I don't kill every day. I know. But three months ago, you killed the. I know this one day. Nobody's perfect. Come on. It's like that way with lying, stealing, sexual impurity, anything. The law is broken. And he says to the Jewish people, don't you know that your breaking of the law has been shameful even in the eyes of Gentiles? God's name is blasphemed because of the way you carry on. You have religion, but you don't act right. Circumcision has value, the sign of being a Jew, male, has circumcision if you observe the law. But if you break the law, you become as though you had not been circumcised. You're making a big thing about, I was circumcised like, like all my ancestors. So he says, it doesn't mean anything unless you obey all the law. Any male as a little baby, you get circumcised. You have no volition to that. They do it to you. But he says, if you don't obey the law, it's as if you weren't circumcised. So then if those who are not circumcised, Gentiles, keep the law's requirements, will they not be regarded as though they were circumcised? The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law will condemn you, who even though you have the written code and circumcision, you're lawbreakers. So you get what he's saying now. He's weaving a very interesting mosaic, a case against humanity, everybody. He's saying, you're, you're, you, you're proud about things that in the end don't matter. Oh, I was circumcised. I'm not like those uncircumcised. That's what Jews called the Gentiles, uncircumcised heathen. They didn't have that sign, the sign of belonging to God's covenant people. But now Paul's coming from a different angle and saying that was the Old Testament. That was under the law. But the law's not going to help you because the law doesn't ask you, are you circumcised? The law says, did you break one of my commands? How about that? No, but when I was five days old or eighth day, on the eighth day I was, I don't care what happened on the eighth day. You punched that guy in the stomach the other day and you robbed that girl's lunch at school. Why do I care about whether you were circumcised? See, that's how the law is. The law is no joke, right? That's what Paul's trying to bring out. He's going to get to where he wants to go in a very famous verse. He wants everybody's mouth stopped. No more justification. No more rationalizations. So he's saying, you pride yourself in your Jewishness. There's nothing to be proud about if you violate the law, because now you're a lawbreaker and you're doomed. And the Gentile who obeys their conscience and does the right thing, even though they're not circumcised, they're more righteous than you are in that one matter. He's going he's gonna to bring everybody into the same barrel here in just a moment as we read on. But this is a very good cautionary tale against self-righteousness. We have it in all different ways, don't we? Churches, denominations don't fellowship with other denominations. Our doctrine, we're Calvinists, you're not Calvinists. No, no, we're Arminian, we're, we're charismatic, you dead old Baptists. 
Well, first of all, how could you know the plague of your own heart and talk like that about anybody? The question is, if you want to look at it that way, who's most like Christ? Not what doctrinal position you have. Doctrine won't save you at the day of judgment. Righteousness is going to be needed. So it's your life. It's your, rack, your track record. What have you done? Did you do right or did you do wrong? No, but I was baptized when I was 11. I know, that's great. You were baptized. That was a good thing. But you've been extorting money from people, been robbing on your job. You use filthy language. I know, but when I was young, I learned all the gospel songs. Ah, fly away, oh glory. Ah, fly away. I know, that's great you know the song. I also know the Lord's Prayer. You want to hear it? Our Father, which art? No, no, I want to know this. When will you stop stealing, cursing, lying, being mean, being racist? When will you stop? When will you stop being resentful against uh, people of color or people who are, are Caucasian? When? When are you going to stop that? Because that's what you're going to be judged by. Not what good works you did over there, but by the violation of the law. This is Paul's argument in early Romans. You have to understand it. He wants to, I'll jump ahead. He wants to get everyone quiet. No excuses, no rationalization. To the Gentile, he wants to shh, be quiet. Just say, have mercy on me. To the Jew parading around with their long robes back in that day, pharisaical, self-righteous, just, he wants to just, Stop. You're just as guilty as the Gentile. Don't say that. What do you think? I'm a low life. They don't even have the law. You have the law, but you don't obey it. And they have a law written in their heart, and sometimes they obey it. But you don't obey the more law that you have. You get it? Oh, it's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of grace. You can't appreciate a savior unless you know you're lost. That's the sad thing about churches in so many places now. They don't preach uh, the, the holiness of God and what sin is to God, so thus there's no conviction of sin. And when there's no conviction of sin, oh, and then someone says, Jesus loves you. Well, of course he does, I love myself. Haven't you met me? Mm. But when you know, oh God, have I failed you? What a disaster my life has been. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. That's where you cling to Jesus. That's where you trust in him as your only salvation. You get rid of your track record. I have no, ooh, don't talk about my track record. My salvation is Jesus. Amen. Have a good day.